So earlier this week, we had OpenAI's first dev day. With that, they announced a whole bunch of exciting new product updates and changes to their API that we're now able to use as developers straight away. This includes GPT-4 Turbo, 128 context windows, lower prices, the assistance API, vision and text-to-speech, and the introduction Dali 3 API. Now, within 24 hours, we had developers building really exciting things on this, including one that I think is really interesting, which is a combination of the text-to-speech and vision APIs, which is voiceovers. Take a look at these two examples here. The first is a website roasting tool. that takes a URL for a website and then creates some feedback on that website in a sarcastic voice. Ah, the React website where every load feels like Christmas morning because you never know which bundle of joy you're getting. Will it be a components list or a surprise deprecation? And then we've got this one as well, which is sports commentary for a video. He's taken on the whole defense. He's a one-man show, ladies and gentlemen. He shoots. Goal! Messy, messy, messy! Unbelievable. What a goal. What a goal. Now, both of these are really interesting, and I wanted to show how we can do it ourselves. So first things first, let's jump in and see how we get open AI talking to us. So I've got this little example here, which just calls out to the new uh, audio speech.create endpoint that OpenAI have, and we're using the text-to-speech model. And we're using the voice fable. Currently, we haven't got any input, so for that, I'm going to say, hi, my name is Ian. I am a software engineer. Okay, cool. So in order to use this, we need to make sure that we've got a virtual environment that has the latest version of the OpenAI client installed. So let's create our virtual environment by using Python minus M, VM, VM. We need to go ahead and activate that. So we'll do source.slash VM, bin, activate. And we can see that VM is activated. We're gonna to need to install the latest version of the client, like I said, so do pip install OpenAI. It gives us the latest version there. And you can also see that we're loading .m file. So we have this .m file with the OpenAI key in it. If you don't know where to get that from, go to platform.openai.com. You can generate one there. I'm going to be uh, burning that one or getting rid of that one after this example. So you are not going to be able to use it. And so we need to do pip install python.env. Now, if I run that, and this, you can see it's right now to a data folder. So if I just dig into that folder, it is speech.mp3 and we can play it. Hi, my name is Ian. I'm a software engineer. Okay. And so we can see that that's really quite a clear, much, a big step up, a big upgrade from say like the max say that we've got on our machine. Um, if I want to make that a bit more um, useful, I can, I'm going to start using something called typer. So I'm going to do pip install typer. Typer is this really nice uh, kind of tool uh, written by Sebastian Ramirez, I think. So Sebastian is also the person who wrote Fast API, so it's uh, going to be a good tool. And what this is going to allow us to do is basically wrap that function. What we're going to do is make this a command line interface. Rather than just having a speech, we want to pass some, say, an argument through. So we import typer. I'm going to indent all this and turn it into a function. And we will call text string there. And then in our main function, we do if name equals main, typer.say run. And when I go to run this, I'm going to clear this down a little bit. And then I do Python speech now. It's going to tell me that I'm missing some text from the command line. What I'm going to do is this argument that we're passing into this function, I'm going to make that an input of the OpenAI call. And then that text is going to be passed from my command line. So if I'm in here, I'm going to use how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Because that's a nice, fairly complex sentence. So let's pass that. So that's calling out to OpenAI there. And our speech file now. It's 12 seconds long, and let's listen to it. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck, he would, as much as he could, and chuck as much wood as a woodchuck would if a woodchuck could chuck wood. So having done that, we've now got this nice function that allows us to create any audio file from a call. We're now going to jump over into the vision side of things. So we're doing the same thing here. We have a new 
um, package that we're using, which is called Screenshot One. That basically allows us to create a screenshot of any website. So I'm doing that here. Def screenshot, blah, 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 blah. Um, basically what this is doing, it takes a URL and a file name and writes out the URL to a particular file name. So we need to update this now to include that package. We need to update in our environment to include that package. And we also need to update our M file to include those environment variables. So do pip install screenshot one. So that N file is also now updated. So we've got those two environment variables that are on the um, vision script there. Let's get rid of this speech one. So if we scroll down here a little bit, we can see that we are calling this feedback command as well. And what this is doing is calling out to chat completions using the new vision, the GPT-4 vision preview. And so we have two messages in there that we are using, which is first is our message that we are passing to it saying that it's an expert in web design, UX and copywriting. So I want it to give feedback. So you can see we're passing in two arguments there. I want it to guide me and tell me where I could improve my website. I'm passing in an image URL, but that image has been base64 encoded. So we can see that we've got this encode image here. It's reading the file that we've downloaded and uh, making it accessible to the GPT-4 vision and then asking for feedback. So we've also used typer slightly differently here. We're using app command, which allows us to um, wrap each of these functions and make them both available in the script. And then when we call it, we just call app, um, which has been created here. So app equals typer dot typer, and then we can use that later in our main command. So let's try and run that now. So Python vision, Python vision dot pi. Okay, so there we go. So from dot env, we haven't loaded that. So let's do that. And then we can see that we are missing command. Let's add one of the commands. So if we add feedback, and now it's saying we're missing a URL. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in my own website. OK, so we can see we saved the file out to a directory. And then we've got a whole bunch of feedback on my website. So it's saying color choices are relatively safe. The top navigation seems clear. The headline howdy stands out, but it might be beneficial to emphasize key sections like popular articles. So this is great, but where do we get the voice side of this? Well, we can just use the command that we've just used and I can import that. So from speech, import say, and then we can just call say at the end here, say, and our response. So let's run that again. And that second run, we may get slightly different um, text back. And there we go. So let's pull up the speech now. See what we got. And we got 131, so much longer piece of dialogue. Based on the screenshot provided, here is some critical feedback focusing on web design, user experience, UX, and copywriting aspects. Web design and branding. Consistency. The website seems to have a consistent color scheme following a blue and white palette, which is good for brand recognition. Typography. The heading Howdy is friendly and personable, but the size is quite large. So you can hear that that's, again, a really good um, audio description of what is what we sent up as text. So how do we do this for video? Well, because we've got those increased context sizes, we can do the same process for loads of different images. So we take a number of images from the video and then we send that up to um, OpenAI and ask it to create text descriptions of it, each of them before taking those text descriptions and then using it as dialogue for text to speech. So I'm gonna be working with um, this Big Buck Bunny file which is from the Blender Studio, which is a group of animators and developers that make really good open source 3D software that you should go and check out if you haven't already. And what we're doing here is we're using OpenCV to get a hold of the video and then step through that video, base64 encode all of the images within that video. So that's kind of crazy. That would be a lot of frames to send up if we were to do that. But actually what I do is I 
grab every 20th frame from that when we actually send it up to OpenAI. So these are the prompt messages that I'm using. And again, we're using the chat GPT, sorry, the GPT-4 Vision Preview model. And we are restricting the tokens that are sent back to 200. So I've asked it here that they're frames from video uh, and I want to create a short voiceover script. If you've never seen Big Buck Bunny before, I'll just give you a quick glimpse, which is basically a story that is about a bunny and gets these crazy animals that attack it pretty much and mess around with it. So we're going to create a voiceover for that. And we can see that uh, we, with those base 64 frames, that we pass them all up. So we're passing it within that 128K context window. And then we're going to print out the response. But let's also get it to write it out as um, an MP3. So I'm going to copy the function that we've already had from our speech one. Say. And I'm going to adjust the path there, so I could do this a little bit better, but for this example, let's just put it in here for now. And then at the end, we will just do, say, voiceover. And we will write this out to a voiceover mp3. So if you want to install OpenCV, we just do pip install within our environment, OpenCV-Python. So I'm going to run that script now, Python voiceover. Ah, okay, so we're not loading our um, dot environment, our environment variable, so we need to do that as well. And also we need to import the say command because we weren't doing that either. So it's just, well, we did actually jump back. Okay, cool. Let's try again. So this voiceover is going to be done in the style of David Attenborough. You could do it in whatever you so choose. There is actually a whole bunch of different voices that you can use. Um, I'm using Fable because that's my preferred one. Uh, there is six others, I believe. You don't get any choice around the emotional range of those um, particular voices. So you can't change um, how enthusiastic, say, they are. You just have to do that through your prompts. Okay, so we can see that there's 14,000 frames. That is why I am only taking every 480 of them. So I think that makes about 50 odd images. And it's possible that you're going to hit context limits if you pass up a huge number of images at any given time. So there we go, we've got our dialogue back, our, our script. And then if we look at our voiceover. In a world teeming with wonders, we encounter a lush landscape bursting with life. Here, in this serene forest, the symphony of nature plays a continuous melody. As dawn breaks, the creatures of this hidden paradise stir. Observe the industrious bird, its wings fluttering with the haste of the morning's errands. Amidst the boughs and leaves, a creature, large and languid, wakes from its slumber. This gentle giant, with fur as soft as the clouds and a heart just as capacious, greets the new day with a yawn that echoes through the green canopy. So you can see that it's taken those images. It's definitely talking about our video that we passed up to it. And it's taken those images and it's created a decent script of it in the style of a, a, a kind of BBC voiceover, so to so speak. So if we wanted to extend this a little bit further, we could, for instance, like I've done here, wrap the entire function that we've just, the script that we just called and pass a path to it. And then that path could be part of our type of command and we can call it on the command line. So yeah, I think this is really crazy that we're able to do all of this just with a couple of simple API calls. It's literally two API calls that we've made there um, with a huge context window on the second one. I'm really excited about the sort of things that we're going to be able to build with these APIs. Um, uh, I'd be really interested to hear what your ideas are and what you're building and if you've done anything interesting. 
In a future video, I'm probably going to check out the Assistance API because that's another big addition that I just haven't had time to fully digest in the wake of all these announcements. Um, so subscribe if you want to see that and give the videos a thumbs up and I'll speak to you soon, new video. All right, bye for now. Bye.